Today's lecture will focus on refraction from a denser medium to a rarer medium. We will see the different cases that can occur when refraction takes place from denser to a rare medium. And then we will focus on a special case, special condition, which is known as the critical angle. So to understand these concepts, let's begin today's lecture. Let us discuss the behavior of light when it's traveling from a denser to a rarer medium. Okay, so we'll see the different uh, cases that form when light travels from a denser to a rarer medium. For understanding the concept, we will take, take an example where we have a water-air interface. So water is the denser medium and air is the rarer medium. And light is traveling from water to air. Now, if you remember correctly, then you might be remembering that during refraction, a ray of light bends away from the normal on moving from a denser to a rarer medium. So if this is dense, this is rare, then the angle of refraction is more than the angle of incidence. That is the ray of light bends away from the normal. That exactly this situation will be replicated in our study here. Because we are studying light traveling from denser to a rare medium, that is from water to air. Now, what does this mean? This means that initially when the angle of incidence is 0 degree, the ray of light will just pass through, right? There will be no angle of uh, refraction will be 0. But as we increase the angle of incidence, the angle of refraction starts to increase too. But the increase in angle of refraction will be more than the increase in angle of incidence because it is bending further away from the normal. So if there is a 1 degree increase in angle of incidence, the increase in angle of refraction will be more than 1 degree, right? Okay, so what will keep on happening is that angle of incidence is increasing, increasing, increasing. Angle of refraction is increasing at a faster rate, right? So till a certain moment this scenario will occur this scenario in which we have a ray of light incident at an angle i and the ray of light is refracted away at an angle r which is more than i now we will reach a scenario a condition when the angle of incidence is such that the angle of refraction reaches 90 degree, right? So here, this is the angle of incidence I corresponding to which the angle of refraction becomes 90 degree. So the refracted ray is no longer traveling in the air medium. Rather, it is traversing through the interface of the air water medium. So here what was happening is that the ray of light was being reflect, uh, refracted in the air away from the normal. But this is a critical scenario. This is a case where the angle of incidence is such that the angle of refraction becomes exactly equal to 90 degree. Okay, so this will be a critical case which we will see in details in a while. Before we do that, let us think about what will happen if we increase the angle of incidence any further. Since we have already reached the maxima of angle of refraction, R cannot be more than 90 degree because that means that it is being refracted in the same medium. It is not being refracted into a different medium. Hence, the whole meaning of refraction kind of collapses when R uh, tends to move beyond 90 degree, right? So that is not a practical thing to think about that, that the refractive angle will be more than 90 degree. Rather than that, what will happen is beyond this critical angle, beyond this IC, 
as we go beyond that angle, instead of refraction, a new phenomena will occur and that is known as total internal reflection. What is total internal reflection? Here, uh, reflection exactly same as the reflection which you might have studied in junior classes will take place but there is no mirror here. It's just the interface between the denser and the rarer medium. The condition being that the angle of incidence is more than the critical angle and as a result refraction will take place from the interface. We'll see in further details what total internal reflection is in our next lecture. But for today's lecture let us come back to our discussion about the critical angle. Right, we have figured out this situation where refraction is taking place. Let us figure out further mathematically what exactly is happening at critical angle and what is this critical angle for which the angle of refraction is turning out to be 90 degree. It should not be a very difficult task. It's basically application of Snell's law. Now we let me write the refractive index of water with respect to air. Okay. This is how we will denote refractive index of water with respect to air and this will be greater than 1. Right. Now let us apply Schnell's law in the critical angle scenario and remember that the critical angle critical angle will be denoted by I subscript C. So when we apply Schnell's law, when we apply Schnell's law, what will happen is this is medium one. So refractive index of water times sine of angle of incidence sine of IC is equal to the refractive index of uh, the air medium mu A times sine of R. But as we know that sine of R, R is tending to 90 degree, right, for the critical angle. So we can replace R by 90 degree. And uh, let us replace it. So sine 90 degree will be 1, which will basically give us mu w sine ic is equal to mu a. Now refractive index of air, we can replace sine ic as mu a upon mu w and this will be 1 upon mu w a that is refractive index of water with respect to air or refractive index of the denser medium with respect to the rarer medium. So reciprocal of the refractive index of denser medium to rarer medium is our sign of critical angle. So here, this is how we get the critical angle. Let us uh, further calculate it. Let me write it down here. IC is sine inverse of 1 by mu denser medium with respect to rarer medium. Now since this is greater than 1 as we saw here, this whole thing should be less than 1, right? And uh, we know that sine remains between minus 1 and plus 1. And since this is less than 1, the inverse of that will be less than 90 degree. As a result, critical angle will be less than 90 degree as can be seen here too. So this is our very very important relation 
of critical angle. So critical angle can be said to be the inverse, sine inverse of the inverse of refractive index of denser medium with respect to rarer medium or we can just write it as sine inverse mu rarer medium with respect to denser medium because these both are basically reciprocal of each other. Let us uh, see a quick example of uh, how to calculate the refractive index, right? We will take the example of water-air combination itself. We know that the refractive index of water with respect to air is 4 upon 3. Okay? Now, if we use this relation to calculate at what angle of incidence will we get the critical angle, we can just replace it and say that this implies IC is sine inverse 1 upon 4 by 3, that is 3 upon 4. And upon calculating this, you will find that I critical is approximately 49 degree. Therefore, for air water combination, the critical angle is approximately 49 degree. We can find the critical angle for any combination when we know that the refractive index of the combination. Then we can calculate the critical angle. And for the air water example, once the angle of incidence goes more than 49 degree, we will have total internal reflection. Less than 49 degree, we will have usual refraction. And at 49 degree, we will have the critically critical angle and the refracted ray will glance through the surface. Okay. Now that we have seen roughly what critical angle is, let us uh, discuss a couple of factors on which critical angle depends. Factors affecting IC, critical angle. The first factor is the wavelength of light, the color of light wavelength of light. Why the wavelength of light? Because we know that the refractive index of the medium itself is a property of the wavelength of light. Therefore, obviously, the wavelength of light will affect the critical angle too. And the second factor is the temperature of the medium. Why so? This is because the temperature of medium influences the refractive index again. More the temperature, less is the refractive index. And as a result, as the temperature increases, mu decreases and IC increases. The critical angle will have to increase. With wavelength, what is the relation? As the wavelength increases the critical angle also increases. Why so? Because with the increase in wavelength the refractive index of the medium decreases. Okay? So these two are the factors which affect the critical angle. With this I will conclude today's lecture. Today we understood the concept of critical angle. We saw the three different cases which can take place when light is traveling from a denser to a rarer medium. We found the expression for the critical angle. We saw factors affecting the critical angle. The next lecture will dedicate exclusively to total internal reflection and how this phenomena is used to, used to our benefit and uh, to a much more effective reflection rather than the reflection obtained by a glass. We will see these in the next lecture. Till then, have a great day. Goodbye.